Hey everyone, today on the Plastic Canvas I'm going to show you how to create the look of worn leather. Hey everyone, Matty from the Plastic Canvas and welcome to today's painting video. And like I said in the intro today, I'm going to show you how to create the look of worn leather, just like you can see on the jacket here on Firebug from Gatefall. Now in a previous episode in this series, I showed you how to create more of a damaged leather look, one with lots of scratch and scuff marks most likely caused through battles. But the difference with today though, is that we're not trying to make the leather look damaged as though it's been struck by swords and axes or anything like that, more that it's just become faded over time. So this look will perfectly suit a post-apocalyptic theme like here with Firebug where I wanted it to look as though she's been wearing this jacket for a long, long time because clothes aren't just readily available. Or a fantasy theme as well if you want it to look as though your adventurer has been traveling for a very, very long time and their cloak or whatever it is that's made of leather has been affected by the sun and the rain and just been tarnished over time. So to create this faded and worn leather look, I started by base coating with ruddy leather, which is a fairly dark leather color, but not so dark that a wash won't have any effect. So then obviously the second thing that I did was I put an Agrax Earthshade, just my dark brown wash over the top. This is mainly just for it to flow into all of those recesses and really darken all of the folds so that as we start to lighten certain areas and make them look faded, we're able to get a really, really good contrast between those faded areas and the darker shadowed parts in those recesses. And so now that that wash has completely dried, we're going to start to build up over several layers this faded look. So I mixed in a little bit of leather brown into the ruddy leather, only a little bit for this first layer. And then with a bit of a cross between a stippling and a dry brush motion, I'm just going over pretty much all of the surfaces, just anywhere that I think any amount of light would have gotten to the jacket and would have started to fade it a little bit. Now the idea of using this stippling and dry brushing motion is that it creates a bit of a textured look as well because it's going to inconsistently put paint down on the surface. It's not just going to smoothly cover everywhere, it's going to leave little gaps here and there and just naturally be inconsistent which is going to help to create that textured look. So you can see with a spot like here on the sleeves, I'm mainly concentrating it on the upper facing parts of the sleeve, those areas that will have gotten more sun. But for that first layer, I really did cover pretty much the full surface of the jacket. And so now we're on to the second layer and I've just mixed in a little bit more of the leather brown, but I'm still using that exact same cross between a stippling and a dry brushing motion and hitting the same areas, but just reducing the surface area a little bit. So by the time I'm done with this layer, there will be essentially three layers of paint coming through. There'll be the base coat that's got the wash over the top, then there'll be the first layer of the stippling and the dry brushing, and then the second layer as well. And it's really, really important that with every layer, when we lighten the color off, that we reduce the amount of surface area that we're covering so that it appears as though all of these faded areas have occurred over a really, really long period of time because not all of them, not everywhere, has faded to the same degree. So when I reduce the amount of surface area, I'm just reducing it towards the area that I want to look the most faded because the lighter areas will look more faded than the darker areas. So I'm thinking about which surfaces are going to have copped more sun. And so I'm just reducing it towards those areas. And so now we're on to the third layer. So I've mixed in even more of the leather brown, but I'm still doing that exact same stippling and dry brushing motion. So before I'm actually laying the paint down, I'm wiping most of it off, just like you would when you're dry brushing. But then rather than just sort of scraping the brush over the surface, trying to catch the raised areas, I'm doing more of that stabbing, stippling kind of motion. And so now I'm really starting to concentrate where I'm putting the paint down more on the edges and the raised folds, just those parts that are going to have copped the most sun and become the most faded. 
but then also the parts of the jacket that are most likely to have brushed up against surfaces and become scuffed. So I sort of imagine with Firebug here that being in a post-apocalyptic theme, they're probably moving from shelter to shelter. And some of those shelters were probably quite small, and so they would have had to have crept down some narrow hallways or something like that. And the edges of the jacket would have been scraping up against maybe concrete walls and things like that. And that will have scuffed up some of the parts of the jacket, which will have lightened it off as well. So we just keep going around layer by layer, gradually lightening it off. You can see now I've gotten to the point where I'm using straight leather brown and we're just using that same stippling dry brushing motion just to pick out the folds and those edges that will have copped the most amount of sun and become faded, but then also those edges that would have become scuffed by scraping up against different surfaces. All right, so now that we've done that final layer of creating the faded areas by using just the straight leather brown, we're going to use the sepia wash over the top of the entire jacket just to create a little bit more tonal variation because as leather starts to fade, it shifts in color. So this sepia wash is going to shift all of those faded areas to a nice warm tone and then we're going to re-stipple and dry brush over those faded areas just to really boost that contrast again. But then what we're going to end up with is still those areas showing through from that very, very first layer, that very, very dark brown in those areas that haven't been faded at all. And then those mid-tones that have got the wash over the top but then these final couple of layers that are the most faded. And what this is really going to do is reinforce that look that all of this fading and scuffing has happened over a really, really long time, which is going to fit in perfectly to either that post-apocalyptic type theme, like here with Firebug, to make it look as though she's been wearing this jacket for a really, really long time because clothes aren't just readily available, or that fantasy theme to make it look as though your adventurer has been traveling for a really, really long time. But either way, we're just trying to create that look as though this leather has been faded over time through weather, or even, like I also mentioned earlier, being scuffed by scraping up against walls and things like that. But what you may have also noticed is that to create these last couple of layers of the faded areas, I've changed brushes, I've moved to a smaller brush. That's just so that as I'm doing this stippling and dry brushing motion, I can be much, much more precise with where I'm putting the paint down to make sure that I'm definitely allowing all of those previous layers to show through. Because by now we've got that first base coat color with the wash over the top, and then all of those layers of the dry brushing that I did earlier on with the sepia tone over the top, and then these final couple of layers here as well. And it's really, really important that all of those layers can show through because all of them work together to create the look as though this fading has happened over a really, really long period of time. All right, so just as I finish off these last couple of layers, this worn leather jacket is finished. I think the effect that you get from this stippling and dry brushing motion gradually using lighter and lighter tones is really, really effective. 
Now, there is a bit of time involved because you are building these faded areas up over quite a few layers, but the actual stippling and dry brushing motion that you're using is pretty simple and it's just the exact same motion the entire time. You're just gradually lightening the colors that you're using and also reducing the amount of surface area that you're covering to make sure that all of those previous layers have shown through. And when Firebug is in the middle of the table, the look is really, really convincing. It does convey the way that the jacket has faded over time and that she's been wearing this jacket for a really, really long time. And like I mentioned earlier, it would also suit that fantasy theme as well if you've got an adventurer that you want to make look as though they've been traveling for a really, really long time. So thank you very, very much for checking out another one of my videos. I really do hope that you found something in this video that you can take away and use in your own painting, or at the very least, you just enjoyed watching it. If you did enjoy it and you've got something that you can take away and use in your own painting, please do consider giving the video a thumbs up as well as hitting that subscribe button if you haven't yet. But that's going to do us for today. So until next time, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers.